Hello there and welcome. It's Jennifer McGuire. I hope you're having a great week. Today I have a lot to share with you. I'm going to show you a fun way to get more from your sentiments by using them to create backgrounds. And I'm also going to talk a bit about coloring on the go and then bringing those colored pieces that you create and turning them into cards when you get back home again. Now I have a bunch of examples to share with you today and even some that I didn't finish but I have plans to finish and I'll show you those. Now this video is also part of the Daily Marker 30 Day Color Challenge blog hop. My friend Kathy Rakustin over at thedailymarker.com has a 30 day color challenge every once in a while. She had one that just started and all she does is encourage you to do a bit of coloring every day. You can turn it into cards or just color for fun, whatever you want. It's low pressure, lots of giveaways. I really encourage you checking it out. She's got a lot in store for you. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and first start out with creating the sentiment backgrounds and the reason why I like to make these and have a bunch on hand, and I'll explain that as I go. Now, in our stash of stamps, there are a lot of sentiments. Sometimes you have sets that have a bunch of greetings in them, like this one from Hero Arts or this one from your next stamp. But sometimes you just have stamp sets that maybe have a theme like a balloon stamp set, and there are some sentiments thrown in. What you can do is gather a bunch of sentiments of the same theme from a bunch of stamp sets that you may have. Just look through any that you have. You don't need many to come up with enough sentiments to do this. What I do is I gather them all. Today I'm gathering a bunch of thank you sentiments of, of various ways of saying it. Pulling them all out and I'm going to mix them all to create a background here. This is a great thing to do because you get more from your stamps, you can create your own background, and you can stamp a ton of these in different colors and have them ready to go whenever you need a background for something that you color. Since I'm going to make a bunch, I am going to use my Misty stamping tool today. However, if you don't have the Misty stamping tool, you could get a large clear plate and use that as an acrylic block, like a disposable clear plate. Those work great for these backgrounds. You can stamp with them perfectly, but I will be using the Misty tool today. Regardless, I'm going to use this transparent grid piece that I have here. You can create your own, or I'll link to where you can buy one. It's four and a quarter by five and a half, and I'm going to use that to plan out where all my stamps are. If you don't have a grid transparency like this, you could draw some faint lines with a pencil on the background in a straight edge to kind of have a guide to make sure you're lining these up straight. Now I'm starting in the top corner, and I'm arranging all those stamps that I pulled out of the stamp sets. And I'm putting them with the stamp side down so that when I close my Misty, it'll transfer all of them onto the door of the Misty. Now I kind of start in the corner and I pick sentiments I like. I like this new Pretty Pink Posh stamp set, some beautiful handwritten sentiments in here. I want to make sure that I have room for those bigger ones too. So I'm going to work around those. I think it's best to work around the large sentiments and also kind of start in a corner or the middle and work your way out from there. This is a new stamp set from the ink blot that has some great little sentiments. Pulled those all together and covered that whole space. So I'm covering the whole front of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of cardstock. There are some openings. Don't worry about that. I'll take care of that later. I'll show you a trick. Doesn't matter at all. Just do the best that you can. Now I'm using some tape to kind of mark off my misty since the stamps are hanging off the edges everywhere. I'm going to have to use my Misty kind of in the middle here because they're hanging off the sides all the way. So I just put little marks every time I'm going to line my cardstock up with the grid lines in the Misty that are near those marks. So now I'm closing the door to transfer all those stamps onto the door. And now check it out. I have my own background of sentiment stamps. Now I do encourage you to test it and make sure everything was straight and make any adjustments you need to do, but it really doesn't take much time at all. Now here's the thing, if you do not have enough stamps to fill up an entire background, you can fill up half and then stamp it once on the top and once on the bottom to kind of cover up that, cover the whole area of the background. Okay, so now it's time to start stamping our backgrounds. So I've lined up a piece of pool colored cardstock with those lines on my grid mark there. And I'm going to ink up my stamp with Versamark ink. Now here you got to put some muscle into it. Now I normally don't do CPR on my stamps like this, but with this technique you want to. The reason why is there's a lot of images here. And some, since some stamps are made by different manufacturers, some of them actually are different depths. So you want to make sure that they all stamp well. 
If you have a plastic plate, that actually has some flex to it too, so you should be able to stamp them all. So now I'm adding some white embossing powder and I'll set that aside and go ahead and stamp another and add the powder to that. After I created a bunch of backgrounds, I'll go ahead and heat set them all at once. Just a reminder that you might want to use an anti-static powder tool on all your cardstocks so you don't have any fingerprints when you're doing the embossing. I really like the look of this clear heat embossed so that you just have a tone on tone background with a little bit of shine and dimension. But on light colored cardstocks, you can also do a white embossed image if you wanted to. Or you can just stamp with regular colored ink for a tone on tone look. I did a variety of things today, but I really like the raised look that you get with the heat embossing. So I took about 15 minutes to range up all those stamps, and now I'm going to stamp a ton of backgrounds. I think I did 30 in total. While I've got these here, I might as well. I'm going to use some of them today and set some aside for future cards. This is a great way to make a bunch of cards at once or have things ready for the future when you do need cards. I give a lot of cards out, so I make quite a few. So here you can see the difference between clear heat embossing and white heat embossing on the background. But check it out, those backgrounds are filled with thank you greetings and messages of kindness. At the end of this video, I'll show you all the stamp sets that I used in case you're interested in any particular stamp. Now remember earlier I said to not worry about it if you have any openings or gaps in your background? Well here's the trick that I do. I just pick a tiny little image that I can stamp in those open areas. For this one I'm using this little envelope stamp image with a heart on it. This is from a Mama Elephant stamp set. I'm just going to stamp that in any openings, again with Versamark ink, and I'll clear heat emboss it so it matches all the sentiments I have and this looks like one entire complete background. Didn't take much time and I can make a bunch of backgrounds at once. And keep in mind, you can do theme backgrounds. So grab all your birthday stamps and create a birthday background or a thinking of you background, whatever you need for whatever occasion. Now, most of my examples are heat embossed, but I did wanna show you, you can just stamp tone on tone. This is craft cardstock and I'm stamping with Hero Arts soft brown ink. This will be pretty intense at first, but this will soften and give you a beautiful tone on tone look like you see here. So this is great for kind of making a subtle background so that you can put a focal point on top of it later. Okay, so now that I created some thank you backgrounds, I also did a birthday background. The same way you can see here, this is all birthday in the background. For this one, I'm not gonna show you the whole process, but this time I started in the middle with that big Hero Arts uh, happy birthday script sentiment, and I started working my way from the middle. It doesn't matter where you start on your little background, but it's best to start somewhere and kind of radiate out from there as opposed to starting in different corners and working your way in. You'll get trapped and it's really hard. So here I've got a bunch of birthday sentiments there, celebrate sentiments. They're all hanging off the edge, that's okay. You're just gonna wanna transfer that into your Misty and then you have another background stamp ready to go. And I did a few with these birthday images also to have ready for future cards. And if you find that one of your images doesn't stamp completely, don't worry about it. What you can do is hide that with whatever elements you put on this card. You'll notice in my card examples later that the elements are in different positions each time. That's because I'm hiding a sentiment that didn't stamp completely. Okay, so now I have a bunch of these great backgrounds ready to go. I wanted to show you the other part of this and that's all those little colored elements. I do a lot of coloring on the go. So I have a bag where I keep a bunch of pre-stamped images and markers and everything I need to do coloring. I'll take this to restaurants, my kids color with me, take it to baseball games, everywhere I need to go. This is a bag from 31. I've shown this in videos before because I use it for many different things on the go. This one is my coloring bag. It zips up completely close so nothing falls out and there are a bunch of pockets. In this top pocket up here, I keep all my pre-stamped pieces. I'll just stamp a bunch at once. Then I have them ready to color and once I have them colored, I can bring them back to my craft room and turn them into cards. My kids do these so you'll see some in here colored by Lila and it's just handy to have if you're somebody like me and is always wanting to stay busy. So you could fill this bag with Copic markers, colored pencils, anything you want. I have in my bag some Tombow markers and a shimmer pen from Spectrum Noir so I can do like a faux watercolor on these by blending with that shimmer and then I end up with a shimmery looking result. This is by the way Bristol Smooth cardstock that I've stamped all this on. 
So you can see this holds a bunch of markers in there. There's also a pouch where I keep a black pen, a white gel pen, some scissors, and a shimmer pen to do blending with. So I really like this bag. I'll link to where you can get one. However, try any bag that you may have. It just grab something. It really is fun to do this coloring on the go. It's therapeutic and a great way to make good use of your time. So I wanted to show you that crafting bag on the go. Okay, so now I have a bunch of images ready. This is what I do once I'm done with all of those. I come back and I either cut them out by hand, which I usually do actually, because I don't always buy coordinating dies for my stamp sets. It's just a way to save money. If I have the coordinating dies, I go ahead and die cut them all at once. I always make sure that I stamp my images far enough apart so I have room to use the dies if I need to. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and die cut all of those images and then I can use these pieces that I colored on the go with the backgrounds that I created earlier. Okay, so now it's time to pull those cards together. I started by trimming a little bit off the top and the bottom of our stamped backgrounds. So part of a note card will show. I have a top folding four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. I'm gonna glue this right onto the front. I also have a heart die. You could use any shape die or punch here. I'm going to cover up the part of a stamped image that didn't look great on the background. I'm going to position it right kind of in the bottom corner there, tape it in place and run it through my die cut machine and cut through both layers at the same time. If you can't cut through both layers, you can cut them separately and then put them together if you need to. So I'm going to tuck my little butterfly in so it looks like it's kind of coming out from the heart. And then I'm going to glue down any edges to make sure that it stays put. I'll, I'll actually, since so little of it is touching the paper, the butterfly, I will squirt a little bit of strong adhesive under there to make sure it stays put in the mail. I also cut a piece of cardstock that I'm going to put inside of the card so that color shows through when the card is closed. I also think this is fun because I can use a white gel pen on that color. And I'll just write my message in the card towards the top so that it doesn't show through that little window. Now I wanted a bold, simple sentiment along this. So I have this Mama Elephant stamp set that has these nice bold greetings. I'm going to stamp them with black VersaFine ink and then add clear embossing powder to it so it has that heat embossed look with a little bit of shine so it'll stand out on the front of the card. I also thought it would be pretty to do gold embossing here, but I decided to go with the black. I'm just gonna use my scissors. I never do this to cut a straight line, but I'm using my scissors to cut right along the edges of this. And then I'm using some foam squares to pop that little sentiment on the front of the card. So there it kind of stands out. And I, this also helps to anchor that butterfly and make sure that it stays put on that open window. Now on this next example, the word appreciated didn't really emboss well there. So I decided to kind of cut that part out with the heart die. So I'm gonna kind of have it hang off the edge for something different. And by the way, these little hearts that we cut out, I'm gonna save all of them and I can use them for another card. Since they have all those sentiments already stamped on it, they're ready to go. I think it's fun how that window kind of hangs off the edge of the card. Okay, I also wanted to add some embellishments. These are some new sequins from Pretty Pink Posh that are so wonderful. They're clear, there are three sizes in it, and there are no holes in the center of the sequins. I don't know why, but that makes me so very happy. They look like little flat gems on your cards. I am in love with these, and I will be using these often. I'm so excited. So they're whole list sequins, really fun. Anyways, I just wanted to show you one other example. I cut and colored all these cute little pretty pink posh kids and some lawn fawn apples. And I'm going to make those into teacher cards. So you can really use any image to kind of hang onto a window like this with the sentiment background. It's really a card design that can work with a lot of supplies that you probably already have. Now I made a bunch of backgrounds and images that I didn't have time to put together. So this stack on the left are backgrounds and images that are ready to go into cards. I'm gonna be putting these together over the weekend. So you can stay tuned to my Instagram account if you wanna see what these all end up looking like. But these are some great cards for mass producing. I'm gonna give a lot of these to teachers and then also to have some birthday cards on hand. And by the way, that sentiment background can also be used to stamp on the flap of your envelope so that it matches perfectly. Now before we go, I want to show you the stamp sets that I used today. The butterflies are from a new Birch Press stamp set, and the sentiments, the little black sentiment, is from a Mama Elephant stamp set. 
These cute little kids are from a new Pretty Pink Posh stamp set, and I will link to all of these below just in case you're interested. I think these little kids are just absolutely adorable. This cute little sunshine will make its way onto this background very soon to be a card. This is from a Simon Says stamp, stamp set, and it's a great one that I think works well with that background. That cute little apple in that little girl's hand is from this older Lawn Fawn stamp set. And I used quite a few uh, sentiment stamp sets here, but you can use whatever you have on hand to form a background like this. This thank you is from a right at home stamp set. And there are a lot of other lovely sentiments on there. I used quite a few sentiments on from this Your Next Stamp stamp set. I used it on both the thank you background and on the birthday background. Stamp sets like this are very valuable because you got lots of sentiments and you can use them for techniques like this. This is a pa uh, paper smooches stamp set that has that wonderful you are appreciated stamp. I think that's a great one. I think everybody needs to hear that they're appreciated. I also like this right at home stamp set that has a bunch of tiny, simple, nice font greetings that work with a variety style of cards. And by the way, I think these sentiment backgrounds are great, especially if you mix up the fonts and styles of the sentiments. This is a W plus nine stamp set that I use to form kindness that I put on the bottom of the thank you card. And by the way, now that I see this, it says just a note to say thank you. I think I'm gonna stamp that in the inside of all of the thank you cards I create today. This is that new, really, really good Pretty Pink Posh stamp set. This has a lot of different occasions in here. You are amazing, get well soon. I use the thank you on the thank you card and the celebrate it's your day on the birthday background. I really like the font or the handwriting on the sentiment, so you'll be seeing me use this again soon. This is a great thank you stamp set from Hero Arts. I used a few of these on the thank you background, but keep in mind, if you have a sentiment stamp set like this, you could take the stamp set as is and use it as a giant stamp to create a background. So I could just take this entire stamp set, just pick it up on the acrylic paper that it's on and stamp it. Just use it like it's a big background itself. So that's just another way that you can do some stamping. I used a few sentiments from this My Favorite Things Kind Words stamp set that worked on the thank you card. And then I used some of the sentiments in that butterfly stamp set from Birch Press. This is a new one. I really like it. I'm a big fan of butterflies and they can be used for so many occasions. And the sentiments are nice in here too. This waffle flower stamp set has a thank you and a birthday sentiment on it. So I used it for the two backgrounds. And then a Concord and Ninth stamp set. This I used the you're the best of the best on the thank you card. So really look at the stamp sets you have. You don't need any of the ones that I used today. Look at what you have. There'll be sentiments that you can use to create these backgrounds. And here again is that new ink blot stamp set. This is a big one with a lot of great kind of build your own sentiments and also that beautiful flower on the bottom. I really like that handwriting on the top and I used a few of them on both of the backgrounds. And last but not least, this is a great stamp set from Power Poppy that I've been meaning to use in a video because I use it in my own personal cards quite often. A lot of different sentiments of different styles here. And I use the love and thanks on the thank you card and I use the hooray on the birthday card. A lot of beautiful sentiments there. So those are the different stamps that I used for this. But again, use what you've got. This is a great way to stretch your supplies and create anything using this sentiment background technique and also the idea of just adding some pieces that you colored on the go to create some quick cards. So I will have photos of all the cards that I created and more information over on my blog. So be sure to head there, but you can also check out the products in the YouTube description below. I link them all up. Also be sure to check out Kathy's coloring challenge. It's really fun. There are more videos there in this middle if you want to check those out. I appreciate you stopping by. I hope this inspires you and we'll see you again soon.